All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. We're getting closer and closer to the day that I think we might go. I am, I've been pretty confident in the past, um, but this timeline has come together, fits like a glove, and we're learning more and more. I noticed that the the closer we get, the more the Holy Spirit's being poured out and people are learning things now um, that they didn't know before. And these people that were studying before were like titans. They, they, they knew their Bibles. They were really into it. But the Holy Spirit is what's showing us the things that we're seeing now. So I want to get into the timeline real quick and show you a few things and why I think... Um, we're literally right around the corner from the rapture. I'm not saying that it's the rapture day, but I'm saying that we're coming up on the first day of creation, and it would be the perfect day. Did God not say that he He is the, the, the end from the beginning? He knows the end from the beginning, the first, the last, the last, the first. He, he makes all these comments in there, so... Looking at the first day of creation, which is the next event on the timeline, to me would make a lot of sense that this might be the day. So let me get into the pictures. All right, so here we are on August 15th. This is the day that Jesus was baptized and Moses is fasting. You can see the second yellow line, 40 days tempted by the devil. This is where it started. Jesus is currently 1,993 years ago. Um, is that right? I think that's right. It's, it's, uh, this is, uh, would have been 268. So it's, it's not 1,993. It's 26 AD. So we'd have to do the math from 2023. And I didn't do that before I got on here. So, But he was baptized in 26 AD on a little one, which is August the 15th. Again, I'm pretty, pretty confident, pretty secure in the fact that the dates don't move based on the moon. And the head of this year, they called out to be March 23rd. They were six days off. What did they do with those six days? Because the sun came up, and then the sun went down. And each day that it came up, we had to give it a name. We had to give it a date. And when I do that, and I number my days exactly from March the 17th, it lands perfectly that um, it lands perfectly that uh, Feast of Trumpets will land on Tishri 1, September 15th. It does that every year. It never changes. It is always September the 15th. It's always Tishri 1. This used to be the head of the year for Noah until God changed it with Moses in Exodus 12. Up there at the top you can see Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, was moved to March the 17th uh, because of the verse in Exodus 12, he said, this is now the head of your year. It moves back exactly 182 days to the very day. So right now, currently, at this moment, uh, however many years ago, I didn't do the math, but L01 is August the 15th. We are now August the 25th, which is L10. We are 10 days into Jesus being baptized, and now out in the wilderness, he is fasting. He's going to fast for 40 days, and at the end of the 40 days, Jesus will be tempted of the devil three times. And then, once he denies Satan three different times, the angels will come down and minister him. I'm, I'm sure they brought him manna, whatever he needed, because 40 days, 40 days of fasting is... A long time. So, right now we are on a little 10, August the 25th, and we are exactly 20 days away from September the 11th. Now, September the 11th is the 179th day of the Enoch year. 
It is the 254th day of our our year, the uh, Gregorian year. This is September the 11th. Sept means seven, but it's 911. That's when the towers came down. It's 711 because Sept means seven. And it is also leaving 111 days to the end of the year. So there's a lot of reasons why I'm looking at September the 11th. September the 11th was the first day of creation. Let me see if I have this up here. Uh, well, it's not going to, whoops, it's not going to let me do that. Let me see if I can turn it sideways. And, uh, it's not going to let me do that either. First day of the year. Where did I do that? Oh, here it is. God began creating, up there at the top, on a Sunday, the first day he created light. Then he created the firmament and dry ground, and on Wednesday he created time. You can read on the fourth day when he put the sun, moon in place to begin time. To The earth did not go around the sun initially. This is where time began. And on the fifth day, see, angels cannot exist outside of heaven or earth. They can come to earth. We cannot exist outside of earth currently in these current bodies that we're in. They will have to be changed and glorified. We will be as the angels when we get to heaven. We cannot. A lot of people are like, well, are we going to be halfway up when they change? No. I mean, just think about being 10,000 feet in the air, 20,000 feet in the air. You would instantly, you know, wouldn't be able to breathe. So, no, you will be changed right here. And then it will be so fast. So you'll be changed, boom, and we'll be in the air. Um, the dead in Christ will rise. They'll be changed here and rise will be changed here and rise. It'll be instantaneous. And in a twinkling of an eye, it'll be so fast. So September the 14th is a little 31. The first day, and that's always a Sabbath. I know everybody says this, God rested on the seventh day. This is the Sabbath. This is the day God rested. But Wednesday is the day God sets time. So Thursday is the first day. It's, it is it's difficult to explain, but there are two Sabbaths that run simultaneously, and I'll show you that on the calendar here in a minute. Wednesday is a Sabbath. Saturday is a Sabbath. This year, because the calendars are not accurate, it's actually a Thursday, and I'll show that to you in a moment. The animals were created on a Thursday. could not exist on this planet until God created time, until things were put into motion. God created everything with age. When he created the animals, they weren't eggs and little babies running around. They were full-grown animals. When God created man, we were fully grown. He created everything with age. The entire planet was created that way. It was in motion. God is God. He can do that. So, on Friday, he created man. Man, of course, no living thing, notice before day four, when time was created, no living thing could have been created. And on the seventh day, the Sabbath, God rested. So, let me go here and show you where we are. Again, we are coming up on, and we still have, you know, what is that, two weeks left to go, almost three weeks, uh, until September the 11th. September the 11th being the first day, the end from the beginning. I think that on September the 10th, the day before the creation began, or just, just prior to the moment he spoke everything into existence, he created heaven and earth on that day. He created all of the host of heaven, all of the angels. There were no angels. There was no Satan or Lucifer. There was none of that. Um prior to September the 11th. On the first day of creation is when he created them. The angels, again, could not live where God lives. God, the Holy Trinity, is from forever past to forever future. For all eternity, he's always been. He does not require heaven to live in. The angels need heaven to live in. Now, how far God extended heaven out I don't know. The book of Enoch says there are 10 levels to heaven, and God sits above that. So he's not, uh, God is not uh, required to be uh, in heaven to exist. Heaven is a, a thing he created for the ages to exist within. Satan 
was created here also on the first day. He became so outraged. He became so jealous um, on the sixth day when God created us in his own image. He was so outraged and so jealous and angry about that um, that he devised a plan to for the fall of man. Uh, he was upset and came after us. And in the eighth year, which is seven complete years, and in the second month and 17th day, which is the same exact day as the flood began, then that's what I'm saying. God, there's nothing new under the sun. God uses these dates over and over again to point us to what we're supposed to be seeing. We, li we look through a glass darkly. Um, we cannot... We're surmising. We're trying to figure this out. We're, like, for example, the rapture is not imminent. There's no such thing as the rapture is imminent. The rapture has been set right there when God created the heaven and the earth. From the very beginning, before man ever sinned, the rapture was already preset. It's done. It's here. And by the way, it is written in the Bible. We're trying to find it. That's what we're all trying to find. Whether you're looking in the Bible or the Bible instructs us to look at the stars for the times and dates um, and just everywhere around us there are indications that this event is about to take place I've been doing this for quite some time uh, trying to figure this timeline out for quite some time and I've never been able to pin down the dates like I have with this timeline I've been working on for the past three years and I have not seen what I'm seeing now in all these years of trying to figure this out, I've, I've seen people try to figure it out, but then they kind of stop. And I've seen, you know, pieces of information. But here lately, there's just mind-blowing information coming out that I see. And, and this, is a, this is what I'm seeing when I see people's comments. Somewhere between now and back of the Revelation 12 sign, People woke up. God woke them up. People began searching. The Holy Spirit was poured out. And they have been finding things that the greatest minds of the Bible had not found in the past 2,000 years. And we have to know that that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is guiding us and showing us these things. And it's, it's amazing what we're seeing now. So... All right, so right now we are on a little 10. It is August the 25th. We have six days left in this month and then 11 days or 10 days perhaps. So you're looking at 16, 17 days. So just over two weeks from today um, where the Twin Towers came down. Why do you suppose the Twin Towers came? And, and trust me, when I put this timeline together and I and I put – dates on here as to where I think they landed until I did the math perfectly. There are exactly 75 days between the old calendar of Noah and today's Gregorian calendar, 75 days. So if I take September the 11th, for example, 179 days, and I add 75 to that, it will come up to 254. It's exactly 75 days off. And as you know, uh, Abraham was 75 when he crossed over into Canaan. So there are little indicators that I have found the right timeline. So 254 days, again, September 11th, 7-11, 9-11, and it's 111 days to the end of the Gregorian year. So that's what I'm looking at, and then we'll continue on this. Now, I always say to people, and I always get a little bit of... Uh, flack back from it and I want to point this out to you and why I say what I say go to a quiet place by yourself nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody except the Lord into your heart and I get people saying well why wouldn't they tell anybody I'm going to show you why I'm going to show you why because it is a litmus test as to whether somebody went in there and just did a mechanical thing and asked the Lord into their heart or if they went in there with a broken and contrite heart not everybody who calls on the Lord is saved. Lord, Lord, didn't I do this in your name? Not everyone who calls on the Lord is saved. Some people, a lot of people, do this 
just out of so they can tell other people that they did it, just so that they can tell other people that they want, um, you know, to impress. They're not there to try to gain a crown or to try to impress God. They're there to impress other people. So here's the leper's prayer. And pay attention to exactly what happens in this. It came to pass when he, and this is in Luke 5, it, and it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy who, seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him. Now remember, nobody touches a leper. You touch a leper, you get leprosy. But Jesus, of course, being God, did. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. The great I will, the great I am, just touched him. That's it. He's clean. Same thing when you go into that quiet place by yourself. He said, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Talk about clearing up some skin issues instantly. And he charged him to tell no man. He said, don't tell anyone. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody. What I'm saying is you don't tell people that you're about to do this so that you can gain favor in man's eyes. This is a private moment between you and your father. And he said, but go and show thyself to the priest. What is he saying here? Show your works, not your works of salvation. Show that your leprosy is gone. Show that you are saved. And, um, uh, and show this of the priest and offer for thy cleansing according to Moses, commanded for a testimony of them. So he says, go show them who you are now. Not that you've done something out of pride, but you are changing now. You have no longer desired, hey, we used to go to the club every Friday night. What happened? Why Why aren't you going? I just, I just don't feel like doing that anymore. There's just nothing in me that wants to do that anymore. So what happens next? In Mark, we read a similar story. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And he straightly charged him. God, Jesus, well, God, Jesus told him, don't tell anyone. Shh, be quiet. And he straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away. And he said unto him, See, thou say nothing to any man. But go thy way, and show thyself to the priest. Don't say anything to anyone. Show them what you are. Don't go around telling everybody, oh, I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm the greatest thing. I, I've done this and I've done that. And I'm, go I'm going to heaven just like the rich man did when he approached Jesus. And Jesus saw right through him. And offer thy cleansing to those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And what did he do? First thing he did was tell everyone. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony. Right? So we have Jesus telling him not to say anything to anybody. Let your works be of salvation, not for salvation. There is evidence that you are saved by your works, not unto salvation, but unto evidence of what you are. What happens if I tell somebody to go to a quiet place and they don't need to tell anyone and then you guys make notes in here comments in here well we're not supposed to stay quiet about that you can't you you won't be able to stay quiet about that it's not a prideful moment that you did something it is an evidence of what you did that you are saved saying blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciple. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if, uh, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. We, once we are truly saved, cannot shut up. We can't stop talking about it. Not because we're trying to be prideful in front of everyone. We're supposed to not talk about it, and we're supposed to show people what we are. But if they were told to stop talking about it, Jesus said the stones would immediately cry out. So that is why I say it that way, and I'm serious about it. It is a private moment. 
I don't I don't know anyone's heart when they go into that into their prayer closet, just like it says in Matthew six, five and six, go into thy closet and pray, and what you do in secret, I will announce publicly. And so that's why I say what I say and I stand behind what I say <laughs> because salvation is of the Lord. It is not of any work, but there will be works. There will be plenty of works because you're saved, not to get saved. It's very difficult to explain that to those who are in the middle of working. I am better than that person over there. I'm doing this differently than that person. I'm giving more. I'm doing all these things and they're for nothing. That doesn't get you anywhere. But if you're saved and you say, you know what, I really want to help this out. And I really want to do this and I, and I really want to get into this. That is evidence that's different. It looks almost identical. The wheat and the tares, they're almost identical. You can't tell them apart so much so that, that God said, don't, don't touch the tares because you might harm the wheat. Let them grow up together. He'll separate them. Have faith that God will separate the wheat from the tares. Okay, so let me get back into this. I wanted to get that out because I keep getting those comments and I'm sure I'll get more. I keep seeing this. I told you this a moment ago, September the 11th is the 254th day of the year. If you subtract 75 days, you get back to, to the Enoch timeline of, uh, I forgot what it was. Hold on. I forgot what, what that was. September the 11th, uh, 179th day of the year from March 17th as being the head of the year. So let's see here, right here. Yep. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You can do... An easy test, you can go into Google. Everybody loves Google. Go into Google and Google what day it is. Subtract 75 days and you'll know the date on the Enoch timeline or on the on the old calendar before um, they forced the Jews into that uh, worshiping the moon thing. And we have 111 days left in the year. Those things keep happening. It's still happening. 911, 11, 11. I, and it's like I'm just walking along and something tells me to pull my phone out, and then there's inevitably some kind of a time on there that is important. I just snap a screenshot of it. So, in 1993, they bombed the World Trade Center. In 1993. This is 2023. They did this on February 26th, which on the timeline is Purim. February 26th is Purim every single year. It never changes. In 1993, this happened. That would have been, what, 50 years ago, uh, as of February 26th, that uh, passed already. So we're into the 50th year, over 50, 50 years complete, over 50 years. And I misspoke last, uh, last video. It is 23 years, 22 years since um, the World Trade Centers, uh, the, the, the uh, was bombed uh, in on September the 11th of 2001. So 22 years on, on September the 11th will be the anniversary. It'll be the 23rd, is that 22nd year? 22nd year, to, to a full 22 years will be completed. Complete 22 years. Then we're going into the 23rd year. 23, to be greatly afflicted. Ignant. Indignant, Indig indignant, <laughs> much sore, displeased, have, be moved with indignation. So, this is grief. There is a, um, 23 means grief. So, was the Twin Towers any kind of a message for us to look at? And I say it was, and it, it was, it were going past 20, a full 22 years, coming into the 23rd year, and as of September the 11th or September the 10th, it's 22 is completed. 23 is next. So I say it is because the Revelation 12 sign happened 17, uh, uh, sorry, uh, was it seven or six years ago, 2017, six years ago, uh, coming up on September the 23rd, it'll be six years going into the 7th and full six years passed. And so what was the big deal about the Revelation 12 sign in 2017 
on September the 23rd if nothing happened or just like this was it a precursor for us to count do a countdown an amount of time has to pass so you have the Revelation 12 sign and I can tell you this guy Patrick over at Hourly Watch has found some staggering stuff that we did not have in 2017 nowhere near what he has found now 2017 yes Revelation 12 sign 2023 on September the 15th through the 18th wow there's so much stuff going on he's got a whole um, a picture of, of that happening I wanted to show you this again on September um, 26th so the four star alginib skirts along the horizon on March the 16th which is a Sabbath and it skirts along the horizon again on September the 14th. So making September, uh, March the 17th the head of the year. And also making September the 15th Tishri 1. That's how we know we're on the right track. It does it exactly 182 days apart. However, the day of equal parts in March is on March the 16th. There is a 10-day gap. The day of equal parts here is September the 26th. Why the 10-day gap? Why is it 10 days? That's the same question I keep having about Noah being on the ark for one year and 10 days. Why the extra 10 days? What was its purpose? I think something happens at that point to shift it back or to shift it the other way around. Nothing changes as far as the days of equal parts, but the, the I mean the four-star of Algenib, but the day of equal parts shifts. I think that... When the earth shifted, when um, Noah was on the ark, it took 10 days. And I think that because the head of the year was September the 15th, I think the day of equal parts was also on September the 14th, like the day of equal parts is on March the 16th. It shifted, um, it shifted 10 days. It moved 10 days. So back then, it was March the 16th. I think I have a, whoops, I think I have a picture of that right here. So, over here on September the 26th is the day of equal parts. Just above it, Algenib skirts along the horizon on September the, it's actually the 14th, not the 15th. So, on this side over here, we have the day of equal parts. The four star Algenib skirts along the horizon on the 16th they both match the day of equal parts matches but look up at the top on march the 26th is the triumphant entry i think a shift happened i think that the day of equal parts was up here on march the 26th previous i mean uh down here on march i'm on the wrong side sorry down here on september the 26th where september the 26th is day of equal parts was actually up there on september the 14th where the four star algina also skirts along the horizon so there's this shift that happens by 10 days what you see on the left side would match what's on the right side during the flood a 10 day something happened 10 days i don't know i don't know what took place but uh, either the earth shifted i've, I've heard that the, the, to do that to do what i'm talking about it would have to be pointing at ursa major and then now it's pointing at polaris or ursa minor as far as the North Pole pointing exactly where it's at now. So, back into this. September, and I've showed you this never changes. It never changes. September the 26th is a day of equal parts in 2023 and in 2020. I'm sorry, in 2600. 600 years or not, it doesn't budge. The 26th is stay, uh, still the day of equal parts. Again, in March, I should have highlighted it. March the 16th, just previous to where it goes past it on the 17th, is the day of equal parts in 2023. And in 2600, the same thing happens. The 16th, down there towards the bottom, is just prior to the 17th where it's over 12 hours, and it is the day of equal parts. Again, it always is the day of equal parts. You can go back to the beginning, and that's where it will be. Uh yeah, imminence. The rapture is not imminent. The, the date was written in 
stone before the foundations of the world. It, they've always known. It's not like God's sitting up there chewing his nails, wondering when the last one's going to come in. He already knew. The date is set. We're trying to find it in the Bible. It is written in here somewhere. We're searching and cross-referencing and you know, comparing Scripture against Scripture. God says to teach us to number our days. And this, the timelines are just coming together like nobody's business nowadays. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. That four-star algae does skirt along the horizon on March the 16th and September the 14th. Meaning that um, Feast of Trumpets does not move. It is always on September the 15th. It is always on Tishri 1. Always. It never moves. Uh, we keep moving around. I don't, I don't know about you, but my birthday doesn't change based on what day of the week it is or based on the moon or based on anything. My birthday is always the same day. And so are all these dates. They, they never change. They're always the same day. The Gregorian calendar, uh, yeah, calendar was correct in 2022. And I misspoke last uh, video. I wanted to clarify. Right there on March the 16th is the day of equal parts. It is a Sabbath. And again, it's 2022, Wednesday. Wednesday was the day God created time. The first day was the 17th when all the animals were created. The 18th is the day that God created man. And on the 19th, he rested. We are coming up to, right now, so, I said that wrong. Let me repeat that. On the 16th is uh, the new head of the year based on, based on uh, Moses' law. It was shifted back. So, March the 16th is the day the four-star algae skirts along the horizon. March the 17th is the first day. Fourteen days later, Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross on the 30th. 3.30, 30 AD at 3 p.m. That's when he went to the cross. It never changes. It doesn't budge. It doesn't move. It was always a Wednesday. That's why I use this calendar from 2022 because it's actually accurate. He rose on a Sunday morning, which means he completed a Thursday, a Friday, and a Saturday. And then he completed a Wednesday night, a Thursday night, and a Friday night. But Saturday night, he did not complete because he rose at some point before sunrise. Now, this is where creation began. September the 11th, on a Saturday. That, again, the Gregorian calendar is accurate. September the 11th, on a Saturday, is the first day of creation. When will the rapture be? If it's anything to do with what I see in the Bible as uh, the end uh, explains the, 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 or the beginning explains the end and the end explains the beginning, if that's the case, and if it has anything to do with creation, which to me, on this day, September the 11th, when creation began, it was 6,000 years ago. It was 1,993 years ago from when Adam was removed from the garden, and it was six thousand, I mean, five thousand nine hundred ninety-three years ago from when Adam was removed from the garden, and it was six thousand years ago from when creation began. Adam was removed from the garden in the eighth year, the second month, and seventeenth day. So he sp he spent a complete seven years in the garden. We have a jubilee that begins at creation here on September the eleventh, and he was removed on the anniversary on, the, on September the eleventh was the seventh year, and Satan came and tempted uh, Adam and Eve, and they fell into sin on, on, on Halloween day, on the second month and 17th day. That's the day they fell into sin. That's also the same day the flood began. And to me, the end from the beginning, that would be the day that the tribulation begins. Now, at some point between when we're gone, which I think is somewhere around September the 11th, Possibly September the 15th, but somewhere in this point, the bride will be taken away. Then the bridegroom, not being able to be called a bridegroom until he is with his bride, returns and finds five virgins with oil. He takes those five virgins with oil. The other five, representing the Jews, had no oil. So to me, it's a very quick process from the rapture of the bride to the rapture of the uh, Rachel, which was seven days later, right? Rachel, uh, Jacob got Rachel 
after seven days of being with Leia. And the ark door was open for seven days prior to the flood beginning. And um, we have this event taking place in the sixth seal. It goes very quick. You see the bride in heaven watching the seals being opened, and then all of a sudden you see this great multitude appear. Now God is going to put his attention back on Israel, back on those five uh, bridesmaids with no oil. The Jews have no oil. They're not looking at Jesus whatsoever. They've completely denied him. We've heard of him. Some of us have heard of him and kind of don't believe whatsoever. Some of us are all in. We believe and we've, we, we, we can't wait for him to return. Others are just in the world going, eh, when it happens, when it happens, it happens. If it does, I believe it. They're doubting Thomases. But how long do you think after they witness this rapture that you've been warning people that this event could take place, that if you see me go, and when it happens, how long do you think it'll take for them to drop to the knees? Which is why I really don't think that the great multitude will be too far behind us. Not too far at all. But I do think, I mean, it's, it, to me, it makes perfect sense. I don't know about anybody else, but to me, on Heshvan 17, the day that God judged Adam and Eve for eating the apple, the day that God judged the planet and flooded it, the same day, to me, would be the day that tribulation would begin. So I'm looking for, and I'm not looking for it because I won't be here, but I believe tribulation will begin on Halloween, on October the 31st. So, first day of creation, Sunday, Wednesday, the 14th, God creates time. It is a Sabbath. Why is it a Sabbath? Because it is the day that on September the 14th, which is a little 31, that's when God creates time. From that moment, when you count, you go 14 days, you have Jesus on the cross. We know it happened on Nisan 14. We know God backed up the calendar 182 days. And when you do that, and you happen to notice that Jesus was actually born on September the 29th, it, it just all falls together so perfectly. Whoa! Whoa! That's a, you guys got to go. I'm really listening to a lot of his videos, and he just uh, did this video here called Found in the Old Testament. He, I made a video on this same subject, but he just has so much more uh, information than I did. I knew the 144,000 virgin Jewish males were those that were killed for the word of God, and Jesus clearly says that he was the word, and the word became flesh, and the flesh dwelt among us. We know who the word is. And it clearly says that the 144 died, but he just does the most amazing explanation of that. And I would please go watch this and subscribe to his channel. He's doing a really good job, really, uh, really enjoying listening to him. Um, this is Patrick over at Hourly Watch, and he is the one that has found this uh, Revelation 12 sign again. And it is just, look at all this stuff. Can I, yeah, look at all that stuff he's found. We didn't have this in 2017. This is incredible what he's found that's uh, happening here in a few days. I think this is, uh, well, it's going to start. The baby, the child is going to be born on September the 15th. And all of this stuff is going to happen on September the 18th, which, of course, September the 17th was the last day of creation, the day God rested from all his work. So could it be that the bride leaves on September the 11th and that when he created man on September the 16th, that he takes the saints and then God rests from all his work? I don't know. Could this also be the day that the millennium starts years down the road. I don't know. So it's something something to look at. Uh, it's, it, it's amazing how it's all coming together. Am I done already? I can't believe that. Let me go back to the timeline here real quick and show you. Jesus, I have four proofs that Jesus was born on September the 29th, Tishri 15. There are 14 days in between Tishri 1, September the 15th, the head of the, the old head of the year, and I have 14 days from Nisan 1 to the cross. God does everything systematically and on purpose so that we can figure this out. He doesn't just whimsically throw days out there. There is a purpose behind every single date that he has chosen, and we just can't move them around as we, as we see fit. They have a purpose, each one. So 
I showed you the 11 different events in a previous video uh, of the flood and the last one leading up to um, Kislev 24, December the 7th, when, uh, oh, did I do that wrong? Oh, no, it's uh, November the 10th, again, becoming November the 11th, the first day that Noah walked out into a new world where there was nothing, everything was wiped out, and uh, he started the, uh, us all over again on Heshvan 27. So there's 11 things that prove that November the 11th is the start. So could that be when the millennium starts? Years down the road, not not like now, but seven years down the road. I know Jesus was born on this day because we had a sign sent to us of the blood moon that was made white as it passed in front of Uranus exactly on November the 8th. And if Jesus was in fact born, and this is a sign that we see in heaven pointing us, this sign will not happen next year. This sign happened on November of last year. This, once we pass this, it, it will be irrelevant because the sign's over with. I think that's why this is one of the first signs that God gave us. And then when I set it into the timeline, I'm like, what does it mean? What does November the 8th mean? And I'm reading and I'm reading. I don't understand what November the 8th means. And then I found it. Forty days exactly after Jesus is born, his mother is unclean. He is circumcised on the eighth day, which ironically feast of tabernacles is eight days long so he's he is uh, circumcised and named on tishri 22 october the 6th and then 33 days later after that she is clean you see it up there at the top in blue seven days and 33 days and it is november the 8th and then when i found that i was like oh wow we just found a huge sign you know so there's a lot of evidences here as to i mean we could we could be looking at a lot of things i'm looking at september the 11th and we have september the 15th tishri one this is the head of the new year this and then we have september the 17th where god rested from all of his work the last day of creation god rested september the 17th tishri three but then we have yom kippur day of atonement it's the end of the 10 days of awe these 10 days of awe and what what would begin the 10 days of awe September the 15th. What would really, what would really um, start the 10 days of awe? Would that be where the great multitude appeared in heaven? Or at least a part of them? Because I've heard so many teaching that there's more than one gathering of the saints. There's only one rapture. There is only one rapture. There's not another one. Um, that rapture, the term, the word harpazo, rapture, means to snatch out of imminent danger. The seals are imminent danger. The seals are the judgment of God. We cannot fall under the judgment of God. Jesus paid the price for his bride. It's over with. The rest of these, now, they are going to heaven. But it's called a gathering. You see that in 1 Thessalonians, where it's called caught up. And then you see not the same word used at all in 2 Thessalonians, where there's this gathering. So we see it throughout the Bible, and you have to pay attention to the little words, because those are the ones that show you exactly what the story means, and it shows you who he's talking to. I really want to sit down with the seven churches so that I can look at the seven churches and say, this church, Philadelphia, is the bride. This church here, Smyrna, is possibly, and I, I really need to get through and study the seven churches, but I believe we can, not perfectly, because none of us are perfect, but I believe we can discern between which church is which group of people, because we have bride, we have saints, we have the dead in Christ, we have uh, those, those uh, gathered at different intervals, I think, perhaps. And we have the Jews. We have those that are going to the millennium. There's a group of people as one of the seven churches that are going to the millennium. So I also think that there's going to be, there's only one way to heaven. And there's only one way to be in the presence of God. And that is going to happen at the end of the thousand years. That is not going to happen uh, after the rapture. It's not going to happen after uh, the Battle of Armageddon, it is not going to happen during God's and G or Jesus' 1,000 years reign here on earth. God will be in heaven. Our mansions, the, heaven, the holy city, will stay in heaven for those 1,000 years. There is another period of time, a 1,000-year period of time, where I think that those who 
didn't or couldn't make a choice for God are taken and put there. Um, we know that um, John was taken to heaven in the spirit. He wasn't taken in his body. He was taken in spirit. Uh, his body stayed here on earth. His body could not survive up there unless he was changed. So, like when uh, Enoch went, he walked with God, he was changed. He was no more. He His body had to be changed. He couldn't be up there in this human body. This human body would die. I mean, just go into space, take off your helmet. You, you die instantly. It's just... A lot of this is honestly, it's just common sense. It's just, it's literally just, like, it's not going to change because of heaven. You see what I'm saying? Heaven has different set of rules, uh, different things. But again, heaven is a created place. Earth is a created place. Heaven is not, God is not confined in heaven. God is beyond that. Even I mean, we, our minds can't even begin. It, it, it hurts to think about it. God is so much further than that. So when we're discussing heaven as where we're going, we're going there, but we can't go any further than that. I mean, we wouldn't want to. We, we don't. I, 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 we, there's no way. We're going to be so content. But when Jesus comes here, he's going to rule and reign here for a thousand years. They're going to be building things, and they're going to build it right. And there's going to be cars running around, and there's going to be cell phones, and there's going to be people having babies. The curse is lifted. So when you drop a seed in the ground, boom, something wonderful is going to grow up. Um, everything's going to be fine. Yes, they can die. We can't. We have whole. Uh, we have like heavenly bodies. We cannot be corrupted in any kind of way ever. We will come down here to rule with an iron rod. We will be down here during that thousand years. I think with regular jobs, honestly. I think we'll just be like, think our way to our job and we're going to be there. Nope, can't do that. That's wrong. We're going to do it this way because this is the right way to do it. And we're, gonna, we're not going to cut corners like they are now. They're just, they just make something that just falls apart after a couple of months. And you're just used to it. And you just go buy another one, right? Back in the old days when they built something, they built it the last, their, their stuff that they built 30, 40 years ago that's still running and r working perfectly because they cared. And it'll be like that during the millennium. So during that thousand years, I think that a lot of people who didn't quite see, they have to make a choice for Jesus during that time. And he'll be right there ruling. We'll be right there with him ruling. They'll have firsthand knowledge of him. And yet in the end, Satan will be released and he'll lead many astray. And now at that point, that's where the great white throne judgment occurs. And then they are cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire happens at the end of the thousand years. So I do think that is, is a, for me and my understanding and what I read is there's a great possibility that while people have died, I think God's going to bring them back to go through the millennium, to give them that opportunity to choose him to believe on him, to accept the blood, go to a quiet place. So anyway, that's a study I need to do on the seven churches to see if I can pin down which group it is. And it's getting very exciting. We're so close to the end. Um, like I said, so many signs have occurred since November the 8th. That one, there's just so many other things that have gone on that we've seen, um, you know, with bricks and with um, this crazy, I mean, this uh, according to them, this peace deal they're about to sign with Saudi Arabia is like leap years ahead of anything they've done so far. And there's this thing that they've been doing, I guess, for the last three years. I forget who I saw that at, but for the last three years, they've been telling everybody, they, they believed that, that there's a cornerstone in um, the ark, um, not the ark, sorry, the uh, rock of, uh, what is it, what do they call it? The, the, the temple, the temple mount, temple mount, um, the mosque that's there. I wish I could remember the name of that thing. I'll get it. Uh, but anyway, there's a cornerstone in there, and they said that's where Muhammad rode his horse into heaven. But they've been working on a campaign for the last three years telling people, no, that's not where it happened. There is another holy site, more holy than that, and they've been pushing people's ideas onto that other holy site. And the reason that they're doing this apparently is to give Jordan or Saudi Arabia control over the Temple Mount, and they're going to take down that thing. And they're going to let the Jews have their, they're going to let the Jews build their thing. So all of this is coming together. There's just too much evidence. Look at the, I mean, just look what uh, Patrick has found. I mean, it's just incredible. The knowledge that everybody has now compared to what they had just a few years ago. So if anything pops up, 
I just wanted to get out to when where we are now. Like I said, we are on a little 10, August the 25th, and uh, we're just chugging along to the first day of creation. We're just watching. We're just going from stepping stone to stepping stone to stepping stone. We can't see the other side until we finally get to the other side, and then we'll be there, and in just one second you'll be standing here, and the next second you'll be standing in heaven. Jesus will be there, and it's not going to be a shy moment or a scared moment. He's going to be your best friend. He's going to walk up to you and say, hey, man, you just, I mean, it's going to be really relaxing. There won't be any stress over it. Was I good enough to be here? Is he going to come up to me and throw No, you're there. You won. You're there. You made it. Congratulations. You know, good and faithful servant. You made it. You're in heaven. And it's going to be absolutely amazing after that. It's going to be incredible. I can hardly wait uh, to see you all there. And we will be there, I believe, very shortly. There's just too many things going on right now for this to go on any further. I am not even beginning to look anything past, honestly, um, September the 15th. I think J, uh, J.D. Farad said September the 25th, which is the day after Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So it, it starts at nightfall on September the 24th, which is September the 25th over there. So Day of Atonement to me, though, that says something else. It doesn't say rapture to me, but he says we, w we sh won't be here to see that. So we'll see. So anyway. Repo Man 64, let's study those seven churches and see who they apply to. I uh, believe Philadelphia applies to us, and I believe Smyrna applies to either the dead in Christ that rise or the saints that go in the sixth seal. So um, we'll, I'm going to be studying on that to see uh, where that leads me to uh, to do and just write them out and just write right next to it. This is the church. This is, you know, like I said before, I started touching on the subject. There's only one rapture. There's only one. There's not more than one. We'll be swiped out of imminent danger. There are no seals open. Um, nothing has happened yet. We've just been in a in, in a, a really harsh environment here since Satan's running this world. It's not it's not the ideal situation for any of us, really. Uh, but the day's coming where God is going to pour out his judgment on this planet, and he's going to begin doing that when he opens those seals. We will be in heaven to witness that event take place. There are no seals open. I know there's a lot of trying to just, well, you know, there was this war 200 years ago, so that had to be this seal. And look at how the stars go around, and this is a white horse right here, so that's that one. No, it's not. There are no seals open yet. They are going to begin we, that's what the purpose of the rapture is. We will not and cannot fall under judgment. We will not be here to witness a single seal, but we'll be in heaven to witness that first seal open. And uh, we'll be there watching John there in the spirit and um, see that event take place. So anyway, Repo Men 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please go subscribe to uh, Cool Cat. He's really, he really is a cool cat. He's, uh, his name is Kelly, and uh, he really... He's he's uh he's something else, but he really does a good job. He's very knowledgeable, and man, does he study. I am I'm not jealous, but uh, my strength is this timeline and where everything landed, and his strength is seriously just going word by word by word. And when he said, when he had his video today of the 144,000, my mind was blown. I had the same video a year ago, but the things he found that I didn't even come close to finding, I just knew who they were. I knew the 144,000 were the virgin Jewish male babies killed for the word of God um, by King Herod, the ages two and under. And he goes in there, he's like, Everybody, and I've had those comments like, well, there there weren't that many babies in Bethlehem. Go watch Cool Cat. He's like, it doesn't say Bethlehem. It says, and from the coast. And he explains what that word means. It's everywhere. Every Jewish male was killed everywhere. And it added up to 144,000. And it added up to 12,000 babies per tribe. This is the only group. The Bible's not just going to, like miraculously find 144,000 people out of nowhere. Oh, I like him. I like him. Well, you, you did, he died for the word. Of, no, they didn't die for the word of God. They weren't innocent. You know what innocent is? A baby that's two years and under. That's innocent. And when he goes through this explanation, I'm just sitting there. Wow, he just did that so well. So go watch that uh, video that he put out. It's, it's just amazing. And please subscribe to these channels. Again, this rapture is going to occur. 
exactly what I wish I could just come on here. I mean, that'll be my headline. That'll be my headline. When we see something major go on, and now I know the exact date, my headline will be, now we know the date of the rapture. It is this day, and it's going to be incredible. If that should occur, or maybe the rapture just happens, I don't know how this I don't know how this is because I've never been raptured before. If I'd been raptured before, I could explain all this to you like, you know, like I've done it before. But I haven't. None of us have. And so we're just trying to figure it out. But uh, like uh, like the channels, share the channels, and subscribe to them. Not for me. I don't get anything out of it. I, I, don't, I don't believe. I haven't seen it. I don't know him, Kelly, that well. But I don't think he ask for anything. I think he just does it out of love for, for the Lord. I'm not sure. But those who do ask, it's fine too. I don't want to start that up because there are those like Bob Barber over there at, uh, well, Uptime and um, End Time Dreams and Visions. You know how much good he does with the money you send him? He sends, you send him a little bit of money and he is helping people like I never could. So that's very important. So when you see a channel that's asking for money and they're doing it for the purpose of bringing in the word of God to, to people who likewise have never heard it and feeding them too, because they're hungry. You're doing an amazing thing for God that don't ever think that, uh, I think that if people are asking for money, that it's a bad thing. It is not. I just don't, I don't ask for anything. So who knows? I don't know Kelly well enough to know whether or not he does. I don't think he does, but it doesn't matter if he did because he probably, I mean, Every Christian would use it for the glory of God. So please subscribe to these channels and like them and share them everywhere. Because if they're shared everywhere, it'd be really hard for them to find where everywhere it was shared. I mean, if you even like recorded it in your phone and then after the rapture, it got played. It's going to go right back onto the Internet. You cannot get rid of all of it. That's why it would be so difficult the more it gets out there. Uh, for Satan to get rid of it. And these are important things for the saints to hear during the tribulation. So let me get off here. I think I did everything. God bless. And I'm telling you, we're uh, we're so close. I'm so excited. And we're getting right there. And uh, we're just going to keep watching, keep trying to figure this out. So we'll chat with you again. Maybe never. And September 11th, I'll be back on here. Unless it happens before that. So we'll chat with you later.